Hey Explorers, I'm Jessica. And I'm Robert. And today on Exploring the Local Life, we're going to be discussing what happens when your slide motor fails and how to get it out so you can push your slide back in. And get on the road. Hey everyone, this is Robert with Exploring the Local Life and we've had a slide failure. Yep, our front slide motor has decided to not work today and we have to get out of Dodge. So what we're going to do is go over the process that we've seen uh, online and from the manufacturer as far as how to bypass the motor so we can get the slide in. So let's go along and learn and make some mistakes. All right, so the slide synchronizer is there to make sure that the motors are not out of sync and having uh, and have one side pull in faster than the other. So if you do have a failure and the slide won't come in and out, what you can do is look at the slide controller unit and it's going to blink twice green if it's the motor number two or blink once if it's motor number one. And then after it blinks green, it's going to count off in red blinks. And that'll, according to the key, tell you what's going on with the slide motor controls. So our situation was that it said that there was a short between, uh, somewhere between the controller and the motor, but we couldn't figure it out. We swapped the controls around and it didn't seem to be an issue uh, that we could easily fix. It could still be the wire, but all we knew was that the motor wasn't working. So we had to pull that motor so we could get the slide on in. Well, the first thing we have to do is get this rubber seal and move it down so we can expose a screw. Once we expose this motor screw, we'll be able to dislodge the motor itself. And that's what the problem is. Since the slide is out and the motor won't engage, it's giving us a fault of a wiring short. Uh, we'll be able to pull this down, access the uh, motor mounting screw, dislodge the motor, and then we'll be able to manually push the front forward while the rear motor does its job. So we're gonna give it a shot, see how it goes and uh, mess around with these seals. All right, I do see an exposed screw. It looks like it's a, a square nut screw. I don't know if that's the right term, but it's a square instead of a uh, cross or a, just a slot. Yeah, additionally, pulling back, I can see the motor, so I'm gonna get you a closer view of that motor. So I believe we'll be dislodging, I mean, unscrewing here. All right, the motor itself is this cylinder here. So our job is to dislodge it off of the railing and then we'll be free to move. So this is not the right tool for the job because of course, RV manufacturers like to use those little freaking square Thing, so now I gotta go find that, which of course you don't have in your bag either right away. And then at some point you just jam whatever might turn the freaking screw. Whether or not it's the right thing, you just gotta get it out. Okay, we got the ever loving screw out. Well, it's not as easy as they make it out to be. So, a couple things. You're going to do searches for Schwinn Tech slide motor. 
um, or Lippert components uh, uh, slide motor. And the video is very informative, very simple, and it's very clear as to the process of removing the motor and pushing it in. However, they are not pushing in a slide with furniture, kids, dogs, cats, squirrels, rabbits, and, rac and raccoons. With it outside temperature increasing as the day goes on. Minute. So it was hot, it was heavy, and it is hot and heavy, and metal hurts when it's hot. So it's a. Um, not as clean and simple as it looks because in real life your slide is full of stuff. Yeah, and all the demos, or, or, or there was even one, I think it was like a manufacturer. It was like a fake wall with a slide. Like, it wasn't even like a full it slide with furniture. RV. On it. But it was showing the example of what, you know. It was, but you know, you kind of watch this and you're like, oh, this, this should be pretty easy. This is very straightforward. Now you're humping that slide. All right, number one, I don't recommend pounding at your slide motor with any screws. It looks like I was able to dislodge it from the base upward with a little bit of tapping just to get it going. So we should be able to freely push the slide in now on the front and we'll try to do it in tandem with the rear motor. So Jessica, show us the motor. The motor. It's the Schwintech model number 23. Uh, two, three, six, five, seven, five. So you can go to the Lipper website and pay like double for it, or you can go to Amazon and other places online and get it for like 140 bucks. We have not yet bought the replacement. So we're actually going to have to do another video as to how to install it. Exciting stuff. Totally. So we could totally screw that up. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And so probably weighs like a pound or two. It feels pretty thick. Definitely can be used as a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely put a knot on somebody's head. And here are the wires. It's a six pin harness. And, uh, huh. So another reason we think that it is because the motor went bad is because once I pulled this out, a couple little parts fell out of it too. I tipped <laughs> it over and there are a couple little broken parts. I think it's broken. In yeah. any event, it had nothing to do with that hammer. Yeah, nothing to do with that hammering. Backside move, Eddie. Okay. I'll come in. Stop. Stop. Is it stopped? Stop. Okay, so at the last minute there, the slide actually started rolling in again with the motor. But I went ahead and removed the motor and actually had some metal pieces come out of it. So it is totally shot. Now we're gonna see about securing the slide from the inside so that when we're going down the road, it just doesn't start to pop out because now there is nothing holding it tight to the RV. Uh, the recommendation procedure, recommended procedure is to get a long piece of wood and just jam it inside the slide against the wall of the RV and the inside wall of the uh, slide. In order to secure our slide, we need a 29 inch piece of wood. That way we'll be able to block the slide from moving outwards when we're driving down the road. So, of course, having the wrong tool for the job, we're going to go ahead and 
cut a piece of wood, a 2x4 that's too long for the job. But it's gonna be fun. Let's move the camera. Obviously you saw Robert brace it with the uh, two by fours and we had a successful drive, no issues there. And then when we got to Florida, um, he was able to very easily, I say very easily because I'm not the one that's ever pushing anything or using any type of uh, power or I, I just kind of stand around and push a button. So I pushed a button and he seemed to very easily push it out without incident and we have our slide out now. It did take a little bit of effort. And the thing is, actually, I was pushing out faster than the other motor could push its end out. Of it, you know, so. Yeah, but by that, I just meant that literally we pushed a button and we were able to get it out. It wasn't like we were there for a really long time yeah. um, to try to get it to go out. So I'm going to answer the first question. What if both motors had failed? Well, remove the other motor and you just need to have somebody help you push in the slide. Either that or maybe I could have pushed the whole slide in, just pushing in the center section or push in one side at a time, um, which follows up the next question. Do you need the motors to go camping in your RV if your slide motors break? I'm thinking no, you can just go without it if you really, really had to. But you'd be manually pushing out that slide, Every manually pushing it in. Time. So it is definitely not something you want to keep doing. Um, our next adventure is going to be to put in a motor, a new motor. And if so, we'll do a video on it because I know the best thing to do is typically take it into a dealer but if you're full timing it, you don't have time to drop it off at a dealer and hope that they're gonna get it done in time before they close. Explorers, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this gave you a good idea of what to do and what not to do and what kind of tools you need. Mm -hmm. Instead of just jamming whatever you can find in yep. there. And uh, YouTube has been fantastic in giving us the resources to get these things done and looked at. That's right. So if you have any questions or comments, be kind guys, be nice, be nice, leave them below. Ah. Ooh, synchronizers. Ooh, synchronizers. Get a free sticker if you know what that's a reference to. Ooh, synchronizers. It's turning, it's turning. I wonder if I get an electric shock. Maybe it'd be cold. Hold, I'll turn it. Faraday. Faraday motor, yeah. How would they? You don't get a sticker from figuring that one out. <laughs>